The Gold Line Foothill extension to Azusa is on schedule to be completed in September 2015, when it will be turned over to Metro. As each of the six new light rail stations starts to take shape, the station artists are hard at work behind the scenes preparing the artwork that will make each station unique. Each artist, selected by their station city based on their experience and concept, is developing artwork that will represent the history and culture of their station's surroundings and community. In this video, you will meet the station artist for the future Azusa Downtown Station. My name is Jose Antonio Aguirre. I'm the selected artist to do the artwork for the Azusa Alameda Station for the Gold Line Foothill Extension. My main idea for designing for this station was to find elements that were very uh, Ex examples of the culture of, the, of this area. For example, I started looking at the uh, ancient petroglyphs or rock art inhabitants of the area left behind, which mainly have disappeared, unfortunately, because of the urban sprawl, but there are some good elements that people don't know about it. So I started researching and I found some artwork, for example, as you can see here, which was uh, all over this area. They are going to be randomly established from the beginning of the ramp all the way to when you get into the actual paper platform, and you will cross in the middle of the of the of the portal to get through that. So this will be like leading the way into 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 the train. But you know we're going back again to the Gabrielino Tonga uh, Native American tribes. And when I started looking about what they have left behind in this area. One of the things that struck me was the basket designs. You know, so I started looking into that and decided that again, as I did with their petroglyphs or rock art, and I appropriated those images, I was going to do the same, or I will be doing the same, to develop the designs that are going to be around all the bases of the columns. And they will be translated into mosaics, Byzantine, and Venetian glass mosaic. As you can see, the central part is where that basket design is going to take place. And around it, we're gonna have this colorful geometric pattern just to tie it up. You know, that will be really the touch of color for all, 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 all the columns. And they're not going to be identical in that sense. The composition, yes, but not uh, the color pattern. The idea is that we have a variation that makes it very colorful and interesting. For me, it's very important that somehow the community gets involved in the artwork, not just giving their opinion, what they like or they don't like. So what I'm thinking about doing is doing some lectures in different areas, perhaps the library, the senior center, the local high school, making sort of a call for this participation and throughout the community. And what, sometimes what I do, I ask them to just draw. And usually I try to involve kids from six-year-olds to 90-year-olds. And interestingly enough, you start putting all that together and you get some uh, images or symbols that become part of the artwork. And in here, what I'm showing you is the process. After we get the image, it's going to be printed or drawn on paper. So the students will have a reference of what all the colors are going to be like and then I'm gonna teach them how to cut glass. We use nippers, you know, to create either a triangular shape or I can cut it to do more of a rectangle shape. Then we use this high-tech glue, which is about 3,000 years old, made of flour, sugar, and water. <laughs> and what we do, we start defining where are we going to put the mosaic. For example, here I'm gonna place this uh, green element. From the beginning I had envisioned uh, a portal, a humongous portal, with the Azusa name on top of it. And the Azusa element came from this lost uh, uh, monument for, to, for uh, the heroes of First World War that used to be in the central area of Azusa. And somehow during the either late 40s or early 50s, somebody crashed into it and the monument disappeared. As you can see in the drawing behind me, this will give you a good idea of more or less the scale 
at this grand entrance, this passage to this arch or, or portal is going to be like. Initially, the portal was going to be hand-carved limestone, but through the evolution of the design and discussions with the uh, architects, we concluded that the best thing to do was to produce it in the glass fiber reinforced concrete, which is more permanent, is more lighter, and the uh, crown, the Azusa sign, let's call it, is going to be made of metal. We're planning to use different types of metal to give it a lot of more texture and visibility. And again, it will be lighted from inside, so at night the Azusa name will be like glowing in, into this uh, structure. But, you know, keep some reference to that idea of being a crown, because that's what I thought when I saw it, you know, at the beginning, you know. It's, it's like crowning the city of Azusa. When you go through the ramp, as you're walking into the TVM machines or area, you will cross into this uh, sort of like uh, uh, frontier that is bringing you to, to, to go into different areas, you know, other parts of the metropolitan Los Angeles to discover new places or maybe you already know him, but you're going, you're having a destination, but in the meantime, you're going through this sculptural element that is gonna give you that sense of passing through and going through. Watch videos about other station artists, learn more about the project, or sign up to receive construction updates at www.foothillextension.org.